Hey guys, it's Neveda. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to do another vet school slash veterinary medicine related video for you guys. We are coming to the time where the internship slash residency applications are due, so the whole match process, and I know a lot of you guys have questions whether it is time for you guys to apply already or whether you're thinking about it for the next year or even the year after that. I know that I went into the process not knowing as much as I wish I had and you know with just didactic courses and tests and then clinics and just the way that school happens it's really hard to plan in advance and know exactly what is part of the match application. That's my dog. He's sleeping like he always does. Hello. Okay, he's gonna stay there. Pretty much the way I do it for all of my Q&A or these style videos, I'm always gonna have everything timestamped in the description box down below. So um, I will categorize it by, I guess, topics. But I have my little notebook that I kind of wrote down my thoughts just to stay organized. Let's just get right into it. So I think the best way to start this off is talking about what is the veterinary internship, what is the match process like. And essentially an internship is basically one year after vet school, although it can be at any point in time, honestly, after vet school. It doesn't have to be straight out of vet school. It's can, it can be later on in life, and there are people who definitely do that. But what you do is you do a one-year internship for kind of a few different reasons, but the main reason being it is required in order to then do a residency in the future. So if you ever want to specialize or become board certified in any of the many fields of veterinary medicine, you have to do a one-year internship before applying for residency. But it doesn't have to be that you do an internship and then you have to do residency. So an internship is also a great opportunity for you coming out of school after four years, you're a new doctor and you spent most of your veterinary career just reading out of books and taking tests. It's a good way to get some more hands-on experience with more mentorship than if you were to maybe get a job straight out of vet school. So it's not only mentorship, but it's also improving improving your candidacy for a job later in the future, for a better salary probably. There's a lot of veterinary practices that when hiring will say applicants must have done a one year internship or three to five years of general practice. So that's kind of how they equate the intensity and the importance of an internship. The reason for that is because it's exactly what they say it is. It is a very strenuous, tedious, um, and taxing one year of practicing medicine. So for internship, you should really start thinking about it, you know, maybe by third year, even starting fourth year of vet school. The reason it's probably better to start thinking about it beforehand is because the application process starts at around October, November of your fourth year, so that's where we are right now. And I think it's due sometime around December. You basically submit your application, you go through interview processes, and then you hear back by March of your fourth year. That's where you match, and once you match at your internship, that's where you know you're gonna be starting come June or July or whenever. So quick summary, internship is the program, it's a one-year program that you do after vet school. It basically gives you more experience in the field, you have some strong mentorship, and then you are finishing that underlying requirement if you were to want to do residency later on. The next thing I wanted to talk about was the application process so this is coming up for you fourth years out there who are planning on applying hopefully you've already gotten started on it and um, maybe if you have any questions that haven't been answered this video will help but I think it might be more helpful to third years or people even younger who are thinking about applying so if you wanted to get a head start and just get a feel for what's coming, you can go to the website and I will link it in the description box down below, virmp.org. The application process itself is pretty straightforward, um, although definitely not easy by any means, no application ever is, 
but you fill out your basic information, you answer some questions that are about you, like your strengths and your goals, things like that. They have small boxes for that and I think there is a character limit, so it's nothing extensive, not even a paragraph, just a few sentences. And then you have different sections of the application where you're going to upload your transcript and get a personal statement in. That's kind of the most important part of this application process. And then the second important part being your letter of recommendations. Get started on your personal statement now for the December deadline if you haven't already, you know, at least give yourself enough time to make a few drafts. What no one ever told me about my personal statement was that it's really not supposed to be like your statement for vet school or for college or maybe any of your past vet school applications. Your personal statement for your internship slash residency application should be more of a cover letter. So you are not really trying to tell stories and anecdotes and throw in like poetry into there. It's really not about the stylism as much as it is who are you, what are you bringing to the table, how are you equipped to do this, and you know kind of how this is going to help you in your future. I read through a handful of personal statements from peers and people who are going through their current internship or who had finished and were now doing a residency and it all seemed to follow that same format where it was very direct, blunt, and you're basically bragging about yourself and boasting about everything you're able to do and what you know already, also how it's going to help you in your future. And I didn't really see a lot of flowery writing or attention grabbing, not novelistic statements. I will say I found that hard because I very much like writing like that so I was definitely one of the minority who decided to still give my statement a little bit of flair and it was a risk maybe some would say but I decided that I couldn't just have it be bland I needed it to be a little bit more me and a little bit more characteristic of me so I still definitely threw in some flowery statements uh, I was still a little bit dramatic um, and it's just because I simply could not write a good personal statement otherwise that's just how it was for me but for some of you it might be easier to be able to be more direct and not have to turn it into an exaggerated story. Letters of recommendation. So this is also something that like I didn't know entirely going into. There's like an unspoken rule out there. Now I may be wrong. This might be something that was just made up and I heard it from you know someone and it's not really a thing. I think you need three if not four letters of recommendations. I think it's three and then you can have a fourth. I had four. But of those three you should have two that are from core fields of medicine. So we're talking surgery, internal medicine, emergency, critical care, and I'm not sure if there is another core. You should really have two be from core fields. I was almost caught by surprise but by needing two core fields, so um, if you didn't know that, just something to be aware of. I think better for you as an applicant to have two of your recommendation letters be from people in core fields. So those people also have to be board certified doctors. They cannot be residents, they have to have, you know, a trillion letters after their names, and essentially they need to be board certified in that core field. Of my four letters, or the three that were required, I got one more. I had a letter from my internal medicine doctor, I had a letter from my ECC, emergency critical care doctor, and those were my two core. And then I had two more because I needed people who I thought were a little bit more in tune with me and what I expected of my future. So one of them was another board certified doctor. Um, she is actually in the genetics department and the reason that I had her write me a letter of rec was because I had been working with her for four years at that point and she knew me on a better level than the other doctors who had maybe only worked with me for a year, year and a half. So um, I wanted the personal touch from her and then the last one wasn't board certified but I had my shelter medicine doctor write me a letter of recommendation because that was the one that was truly going to show how I did and will continue to work in the environment of my interests. So again, working with shelter animals, working in that nonprofit, low income client community, um, that was going to be the best letter of recommendation for my interests. So ask your doctors in advance, give them 
weeks and then don't be scared to send them reminders and just make sure that everything is going smoothly a lot of people ask you know how do you ask for a letter of recommendation and I mean at this point you've done it before I'm sure you know how to do it already but number one build a relationship with that person and don't have it be something that was done quickly and rashly make sure it's a relationship that has substance and really all you have to do is find a time and place to talk to them and ask them if they'd be willing to write you a, a recommendation letter I found it helpful and more practical to speak with my doctors beforehand. So let's say I was starting a rotation where I was gonna be working with a doctor. I found it helpful to speak with them before I even started working with them and let them know, hey, I'm applying for an internship. I would love to have um, a recommendation letter from you and if it's okay with you or if you are able to, I would love to have you watch me over these next two weeks, three weeks, four weeks in order to better understand how I work as a student doctor and something along those lines. But I basically let people know beforehand that I would be interested in asking them for a letter of recommendation. You know, I would appreciate if they would be able to watch me and have the ability to actually write me a letter as opposed to if I ask them at the end of two weeks or at the end of four weeks after a rotation, they might not have been able to pick up on certain things because they just hadn't been paying attention. Also something I've heard along the way is always make sure to ask these doctors or your professors to write you a positive recommendation letter because someone can say yes to writing a recommendation letter and then it won't put you in a good light. So. Always say, are you okay with writing me a positive recommendation letter? So personal statement, get started on it, recommendation letters, at least put out feelers. And the last thing is your CV. People are very surprised to realize that CVs take a very, very, very long time to edit and get perfect. Sometimes it's harder than your personal statement. I found that my personal statement was easier to write and I had trouble with my CV. So CV is basically your resume, just a little bit more in depth. So I would say get started on that too. Again, in your downtime, I know Navli is stressful and it's hard, but in your downtime, just start working on your CV and just make sure that everything you want on there is on there. Then comes the match process itself. The first step is to apply with all of the documents. So your transcript, your personal statement, CV, recommendation letters, and you apply. And applying means that you select the programs that you're interested in. All you're doing now is sending your paperwork out to them, but you are not ranking them just yet. You're just applying to them. There is a date for the application process. There is a deadline by which you have to select everyone that you're interested in. And then a little bit later on is your date to rank them. So you rank them first and then later on, I think it's at least two or three weeks after that, they rank you and then give it another week or two and then you match. You may have applied to 20 different hospitals or programs and then when it comes to ranking, you may decide, okay, you know what, I only really want to rank eight of them. There is a date that comes up between you ranking and them ranking you that is called a withdrawal date. This is the time that you can withdraw your application from the internship program and not be penalized for it. If you did not know this already and I didn't know it until very close to that withdrawal date, you cannot match somewhere and then say you don't want to go there. So this is going to turn into a whole different conversation, but I say you cannot loosely, but it's not really that loosely because it's kind of a bad streak in your record. You're kind of blacklisted and it's really bad because you're taking away someone else's potential spot. And so bottom line is if you match, you have to go there. I mean, I'm sure there are dire circumstances where it's understandable if you can't, but for the most part, the rule is you match, you go there. So now we go back to talking about where you rank and it is so, so, so important to only rank the places that you truly see yourself at. Don't for a second think, hey, I matched this, I mean, I rank this as my 12th program and I'm not going to get that, so like, it's fine being 12th because I can't tell you how many people I know on a personal level that matched at their 5th program, their 8th, their 11th. So there really isn't the assurance that you're going to match within your top 3 or your top 5 or even your top 10. So if there is a place that you're not really vibing with and you don't want to end up there, do not rank it. It's okay that you already applied to it, because remember, you have that first application date, you're just putting out feelers at programs, sending them your documents, but don't rank it on your list of 
you know, one to how many ever that you're ranking because that rank list is where you will end up at any of one of those places and it may not be your top choice. Going back just one second, um, once you rank places, in the process of those programs then ranking you, they send out invitations for interviews and that's when you go around and interview places or you can do Skype interviews, online interviews. After you rank, interviews happen and then the programs rank you and then you match. So. Where to apply and how to rank varies a lot from person to person and I will be 100% honest with you, I might not be the best source of advice on that topic mainly because my process was very different from anyone else's you know i still did my research going into this application process i still looked at various different programs it just ended up that i only ranked and applied to one and so we'll get into that later but for the most part many people apply to dozens of programs and for the most part rank that many as well so i think where you apply has to do a lot with what your goal is. There are many reasons for applying for internship. They include wanting to be a better candidate, wanting to be a better doctor, wanting to have a better salary as a GP. There is the option of going to do a residency and specializing in something. There's the option of wanting to do a residency but not knowing what that residency is yet, just knowing that you want to do you know, further education. There's just not having confidence into going out to practice right away and wanting that mentorship for another year. There's a whole bunch of reasons that you apply to an internship. Taking into account those reasons may help you figure out where you want to apply. So now if you're someone that wants to do a residency and you know exactly what you want to specialize in, it might be helpful for you to Google and research all of the programs that the VIRMP offers and go through how many of their interns then go into pursuing residency. That documentation is on the VIRMP website. You can see every year how many people graduate and what they do later on and they give you percentages as well, almost like a success rate. Sometimes there are internships that have the residencies there themselves and you might want to get into the internship there just to have a foot in the door in order to do your residency there as well. For other people it may be that you want to be in a certain area of the country and you rank based on that or it may be because you love a place so much. So how do you love a place so much and how do you know where to apply based on the vibe of the place? This is where I say you have to try to get some experience there. I don't know if it's the same for all schools but in my school we were able to do externships. There was blocks that you could choose to either skip out of a block and do your externships then and then also you had up to like six weeks or 12 weeks or something that you could do externships with in between all of your clinical rotations at school. So I decided that, you know, since my school didn't offer as much experience into the nonprofit scene that I wanted, I wanted to make sure I did all my externships in similar areas so that it would guide me better towards deciding where I wanted to do an internship. So I highly suggest if you're a second year or third year or even if you're a fourth year and you have some vacation time, go to the places that you think you might be interested in doing an internship and spend some time there. See if you like the way that they practice, if you like the vibe, if you like the staff, if you like the environment. And you don't have to do an externship or see a place in person in order to be able to get a feel for how it works there. Feel free to email interns who are at that place currently to ask how's it going? How do you like life? What do you like about it and what do you not like about it? Getting an idea of how people are enjoying their internship versus not enjoying it is a really good way to apply. And of course, there are some people who just want to apply and get in anywhere. And if you can handle that and not be affected by your environment or maybe negative things around you, then that's a fine way of approaching this also. So that was applying. Basically, try to see if you can learn more about the places that you apply to. The VIRMP website is a great way to start. Each program it has like a page full description. It tells you what the program entails, how many vacation days, what your health benefits are, what the salary is. It tells you what the caseload is gonna be like. It tells you what your on-call schedule is gonna be like, how many nights you may have to work how many hours a week, it gives you everything. So if you, like me, are the type of person that know there is 
a limit to what you can handle, that is a good way to weed things out there. The next thing is how do you then rank? So you've read through all these places, you find 20 that you like and you're like, you know what, I'm applying to all of them. And then wait a few weeks and now comes ranking. So how do you rank what you want to be your number one choice? And then you have something that you're putting as your eighth choice and your ninth choice and your tenth choice. So how are you going to rank those things? I think there is a certain amount of success with, you know, what you want the most, obviously rank it first. There's always a risk, but I would say definitely for your top few internships, go with, you know, what your heart is telling you. But then after that, I think you have to be a little bit more careful with where you apply. Don't put something on your ranking list that you actually don't want to go to. I think that's the biggest mistake that you can do is ranking something. Excuse me, sorry, that's inappropriate. <laughs> Dingo, what are you doing? <laughs> um, where was it? Do not rank something if you really don't want to go there. It will come back to bite you if you don't match in any of your top three, four, or five and you end up getting somewhere that you just put on your list because you really didn't think it was going to happen and then you end up there, that sucks. Once you match there, you have to go and that's a year that you could have maybe done something different or you know, even just waited another year to apply. I think it's prudent to think about it that way. Again, it depends on what your goals are and if you're just thinking, hey, this year is gonna get me into a residency no matter what, I'll spend it anywhere, then that's fine too. I had a very different experience with it because as many of you know, my goals are so focused and the type of medicine I want to practice is so focused. It really meant a lot to me to not just spend the year anywhere that wasn't going to make me happy. And I really knew where I wanted to go from the beginning and I ended up deciding, and I looked at other programs, I, I think at the end of applying had three or four total programs that I thought I had interest in and as the day got closer and closer to ranking I really started to think okay well what if I don't get into my first choice if I don't get into my first choice and I actually do get my second choice or my third choice I thought about it and I was like I don't I don't want to go there no offense but it was just that there was so much I knew already about the program that I was interested in and that was really all I wanted to do and I decided to take the risk and say, you know what, I'm only gonna rank one. So that's a huge risk, right? Because a lot of people don't match at their first or their top choice. I had to go in knowing I'm ranking only one, I may not get it, and what that means is that I'm not doing an internship. And to me, I thought, okay, you know what? Well, I can then, if I don't get into my internship of choice, I will then just work probably at a shelter for a few years and at least have an actual salary. And in my head, it was, a win-win situation for me. I obviously wanted nothing more than to get my top choice. Okay, where was I? Basically, yeah, rank the places that you really truly think you will be happy at and that you end up seeing yourself. Don't rank places that you don't actually want to go to and do your research into the programs. I think this is a really important decision that you're making in your life and in your career, so Try to gather all of the information that you can before applying and before ranking. I want to talk about the withdrawal process really quickly. If you go into your internship application, you apply, you rank, and then you realize that, you know what, I actually don't want to do an internship anymore. I want to get a job. I want to have a salary. This place is offering me a great job. Don't wait until match. There is a date, usually early January, that you can withdraw your application, and that just puts you in the safe zone where in five years from now, if you want to then apply for an internship again because lo and behold, you want to become a surgeon or something, you want to do a residency, then you're still in everyone's good graces because you withdrew formally and you didn't give them a chance to rank you. So why is this so wrong? Let's say you have five places that you rank and you're a really, really good candidate and you put a program as your third slot, right? Let's say you got into your third rank program and then you say, you know what? I don't actually want this anymore. The reason that you got matched to them is because they also ranked you. So they thought that you were really good and they probably, they have, let's say 10 spots. They must have ranked you between one and 10 in order for you guys to match together. So now they ranked you, you had ranked them and now you're saying you don't want that spot anymore, but the match process is complete. Meaning that there was someone else, a complete stranger, that might have wanted that program and ranked it number one, 
but they didn't make it into the 1 through 10 ranking of the program itself. So that person who had ranked it as their first one didn't match there and maybe they matched at their second place or their third place and they are now bound to that internship program. This is all very very confusing but what I'm trying to say is you think of it one or two ways that you can do whatever you need to to succeed and get what you want and sometimes that may mean you know stepping over other people and I don't vibe with that. And the other way to think about it is just be respectful. Think that this is a process that affects everyone equally unless it was like a life-changing decision that made you want to decline your match process or it was just really something that you had never expected. Just don't be sly or conniving about it and have a backup ready because, you know, taking away something from someone who might have wanted that more than you is all I'm trying to say. There's a lot of drama associated with this, but just know that the ranking process is very weird and essentially even though you think, okay, well now that spot is opened up for someone now, which it is, because let's say they need 10 spots to fill and now that one spot is opened up, yeah, it's opened up, but now it's not open to anyone that wanted it initially because those people have already matched later on in their lists. So it, now it's just a free-for-all for someone who, and good for whoever gets it, but it isn't the person who wanted it the most. I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna move on. <laughs> what happens if you don't match? There is a, such a freak out with not matching, but the quick and easy way to talk about it is basically you rank five places and if you don't match at any of them, it sucks and it is a horrible feeling, yes, but don't lose hope because what happens is that programs will either realize that they also haven't filled all their spots for whatever reason. Sometimes programs decide that they're gonna have an extra spot just as a surprise. So within the first few hours of matching or not matching, basically then this email and phone kind of avalanche start where programs will start to contact people who haven't matched and say, we have a spot open, we see that you have not matched anywhere, do you want to take the spot, yes or no? It's very, very stressful and honestly kind of traumatic, but for the people who need to end up somewhere and do an internship, there is still a chance sometimes after not matching, you may get a phone call from a place you hadn't even thought about across the country and they may say do you want to match and you might say yes and do a year there so just keep that in mind also let's go back to why i only ranked one so i did a very long externship i did eight weeks at the program that i was interested in and i loved it so very much i was a third year and I did my externship January and February, so it was way in advance, but like I saw the interns doing their thing while I was an extern, and it just blew my mind. In basically that moment, I realized this is what I want to do. And I'll be honest with you, before I did that externship, I didn't even think I was going to do an internship. In my head, I thought I would just start working because I don't have this overwhelming desire to specialize in anything. I love emergency, I kind of want to do that, I love nonprofit, I love shelter, and those are all things that you can do without being board certified in anything specifically. So in my head, I didn't even want to do an internship until I did my externship at this place and I just fell in love. I fell in love with the medicine that they were practicing, I fell in love with the patients and the clients that they were helping, I fell in love with the staff, I fell in love with the hospital, I just everything. Plus the months that, that led up to applying for internship, it just got to a point where nothing else could beat it. It wasn't even worth me risking accidentally getting in somewhere else because it was just that I wanted to do that as a program that was offered to me or I wanted to do something very similar by just working without an internship afterwards. I was able to relay this passion to each and every one of my recommenders, so everyone who wrote me a letter. Um, I was able to talk about it in my interview. I was able to very confidently say, this is it, like this is what I want to do. And so all of my professors and my seniors were able to write their letters in a way that showed, you know, not, it's really hard to find a student that knows exactly what they want to do from day one. A lot of people are still figuring themselves out. So if you have, you know, a vet student who knows like this is it for me, then you'd be lucky to have her take her. Especially given that the nonprofit field is still such a tight-knit community, that kind of promotion was really, really helpful for me because we do want more people who are interested in the things that we are. And I'm saying this to everyone who's interested in it. 
make it known because it is not that common in the veterinary field. So in contrast, if you didn't know exactly what you were doing um, or you have a few different things that you're interested in, you're interested in internal medicine, you're interested in surgery, let that be known to your recommenders because then they can write a more general statement as opposed to accidentally cornering you into a focus that you might not be ready to settle into yet. So anyway, I basically fell in love with this place because it was nonprofit. They did forensics, they did cruelty investigations, it was low income communities, and it was just everything that I wanted and so I just ranked them and that was it. And I am so lucky and grateful to have gotten in. Nothing has changed except for the fact that maybe I love them even more. Me being in an internship right now has set me up to do a residency if I ever choose to do so in the future. I don't think that that's in my plan right now, so I am not applying for a residency with this current application process, but it's nice to know that the door is still open for me if I want to do it later on. The last thing I wanted to talk about is how I'm doing in my internship. I cannot tell you how happy I am to be doing what I'm doing. I absolutely love my job. I used to have Sunday anxiety before school and honestly for anything, you know, starting the new work week and I don't have that anymore. It is like a miracle. I am literally very excited to wake up every single day and go to work. That might just be a new doctor thing, that might fade away, but I honestly don't think so. I think it is because the work that I'm doing is so fulfilling and honestly life-changing and it is very just like a lot of work over a lot of years has gone into this and I'm just so grateful to finally be doing what I'm doing and I think I'm getting emotional but the reason being you know vet school wasn't easy for me there are very few people that are into nonprofit to the extent that I am there was a long time that I thought like I'm not actually gonna be able to find a job where I'm happy doing what I'm doing so the fact that I feel that way this early into the game is, I mean, it's just astounding and I am so grateful to be doing what I am and I want to be able to share that with you guys and help you guys if you are anything like me and honestly, even if you're not, veterinary medicine itself is tight-knit, like anything to do with animals, I am here to help. I want you guys to reach out, I want you guys to ask questions. The one main thing um, is to not get distracted by you know me raving about my internship so much because I don't know if everyone feels that way about their respective internships. Mine is definitely cushier than any of the other ones out there so again we're talking about a hospital that mainly practices nonprofit medicine so it is not your you know it's not like Penn the school I went to it is not that high profile gold standard type of medicine so with that comes a lot of different changes that you're not going to have at other internships. So there's just so much to take into account when you make this type of a decision. So now that I'm not following my book anymore, I am no longer organized and I lost my train of thought. So I think I'm gonna end the video here. I really hope that it helps you guys or um, prepares you for the future maybe. And as always, the timestamps will be down below. Yeah. To those who are applying for this year, good luck. And you know, I hope everyone gets their first choice, obviously. I hope you end up where you want to be. Also, good luck for the NAVLI to everyone who is studying their butts off for that. It's gonna be fine. Trust me, you're gonna pass and it's fine. Okay, so that's it from my end. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.